Welcome everybody to this presentation of our Xsense MVN system. Uh, today we want to show you something about what we can do with the system. We're going to tell you something about Movella and in the end we also want to give a demonstration how to set up the system and how it basically works. But before we do that, I just want to show you a nice picture of all of our customers that we currently are uh, using Xsense. So for example, companies in research, companies in automo automotive, um, industries, a lot of different names and also a lot of uh, well-known names. So uh, we want to thank all of you guys uh, for using our products. About Movella. So recently, I think about a few months ago, the name Xsense, Kinduct and Mcube all changed into Movella. So what is Movella basically? Movella is the mother company of Xsense and Kinduct. So what happened? All these companies changed into Movella. However, the product stayed the same. So we still are selling the Xsense product, um, but it has a different name in a mother company. We still have our global presence. So we have our offices in the Netherlands, in the United States, in China, India, and Canada. Uh, and we have a worldwide network of partners. So wherever you want to go to a local partner, just connect to them and you can talk to them in your own language. They can provide with support in your own language. So uh, they're happy to help you. With Movella, we have over 250 employees at the moment. And with Xsense, we still own our defining patents in the field of 3D motion tracking. Uh, the company is ISO 9001 certified. So um, that way we can provide you with the best services. About our systems. Our systems are being used in human motion measurement. We have two different systems, the MVNO window, which is the system on the right. You can see it has the wireless trackers and we have the MVN link, which is incorporated in our full body Lycra suit and which you see the orange lines. These are zippers in which are small pouches for the sensors. Both kits are full body uh, motion capture systems and they are being used like I just showed you in the, the previous slides in over 500 universities and institutes worldwide, mainly in the field for ergonomics, sports science, rehabilitation, biomechanics, and training and simulation. So we want to deep dive, deep dive a little bit in what our systems can do. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about our hardware. Our hardware consists, like I said, of a full body motion capture system, which uses 17 inertial sensors. What's very unique about our system is that we have magnetic immunity, which basically means that there is no distortion anymore in the data. Uh, we, can do that be we can do that because of our state-of-the-art sensor fusion models. And these algorithms make sure that you can use our system in any environment. So from the lab into a production area with a lot of iron and metal, but also outside. So you're not confined to a fixed space anymore. The also another really benefit of Xsense is because over 500 universities and institutes in the world use our systems. We have very reliable and repeatable validated data, um, which is very important. So how do we do this? With Xsense, we use the input of our sensors, which is the gyroscope, accelerometer, magnetometer. We can add GPS and barometer data to it. And we use a very accurate sensors, which are also being used in, for example, drones, self-driving cars, etc., And we apply a biomechanical model to it. All this data comes together in our sensual fusion engines, and that way they can provide you with the best data. But how does it work? What we do? Of course, step one is putting on the, the sensors, turning them on, and open up our software, which is MVN Analyze. With MVN Analyze, you can open up your configuration window which is the window you can see on the right. Here you put in the body dimensions, um, which basically you only need to put in is the body height and the foot length, and all the other parameters get scaled accordingly. However, if you want to do very specific calculations, you can measure all the different body dimensions and fill them in separately. So what would we do if we just would fire up the system and start with it? This would be the result. You can see every individual segment is scaled accordingly and moves accordingly. However, it's one big mess. So to overcome this, we do a calibration. With our calibration, we have basically two parts. Part one, standing still in the end post, which is standing still like this. 
you just stand still for four seconds. After these four seconds, we build in a moving part. So basically what you do, as you can see in the video, you walk around. This has to be done, for example, for, for a little bit more like 10 seconds. So in total, the complete calibration will take you only 30 seconds. And after 30 seconds, this is what we can have. However, you still see an avatar, which is drifting. And this is where the real XNs magic, so to say, comes in. This is where we are very good in. Now our algorithms take, um, come into account. So we go from this picture with our sense of fusion model, which takes into account all the different data streams, processes it live, and we can go into a really nice motion capture, as you can see on the right picture. With this MVN engine and this sense of fusion, we can have a few specific unique points, which are very difficult to get in an IMU motion capture system. These six uh, uh, unique points are the magnetic immunity, which I've told you about. But what we can also do is high tracking, uh, positional tracking with the aid of, for example, HCC5. Uh, we can do multiple contact point detections. We can record multiple persons at the same time. And we can also do something which we call the impossible, which I can show you in a later stage. To give you a small example, what it looks like, this is what it looks like. On the left, we have the, uh, the raw data recording. And on the right, you can see somebody after the process of our sensors and our sense of fusion. And you can see slight differences in the positioning of the feet and the hand, but also uh, the movement itself is more stable. So that is what we can do with our MVN engine. So welcome everybody to the next part in which we are going to attach the sensors. This is Peter. He will be functioning as my assistant for now. Um, and over here we have the system, the Awinda system, which is in this nice case. The sensors are all in here. And um, on the left side here, we have a little pouch where all the straps are. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab the straps. We'll start with the pelvis. This is the pelvis strap. This is the longest one in the cage. And um, we'll get the pelvis sensor, which has a nice label on the side. We turn it on and then we will attach the sensor. What is very important when you attach the pelvis sensor is that you not put it too high. So it's important, it's somewhere around here where also the belt is. So we grab it around and then with a little bit of help, we can attach it. And this is a good way to attach it. So from here, we go first down to his legs. We'll start with one of the left one, which is the upper leg sensor on the left. What is very important with the sensor is that you put it in the middle of the leg. You can always put it on the quadriceps or on the hamstring muscle. However, there's a lot of skin movement over here. That's why we advise to put it on the side. So we can put it over here and it doesn't matter if it's higher or a little bit lower as long as it is on the side. So we wrap it around and then attach it. When we do the same thing on the other side. So we get the other strap, put the right sensor on, and we do the same. We wrap it around and put it over the sensor so it is attached firmly to the leg. Then we go down to his lower legs, same thing, we start on the left side. What is important for the left sensor is don't attach it on the outer side, but on the inner side. And a little bit, if you have the kneecap over here, you go downwards a little bit. And then here you are on the flat surface of the tibia or his lower leg on the bone surface. So there's not a lot of skin artifacts there. And we wrap it around again. Nice on the top part of his calves. So you send the strap won't slide down. And we do the same for the right side. Turn the sensor on, put it on the lower side and the inner side of the tibia and wrap it around again and make sure it's attached firmly. Then we will attach it to the shoes. We have two sensors. 
These sensors can be placed in between the laces. You can put them inside of the shoe. We have these nice foot pads where you can place them on, or you can just use a strap to attach it to the feet. So, and what we're going to do now is put it um, on the feet in between the laces. So here's the left sensor. As you can see, Peter just puts it in between his laces and then attaches it firmly so the sensor won't shift. And he does the same thing for the other side. There you are. It's perfect. And attach it firmly so the sensors won't shift. So in this configuration, we call this the lower body configuration. Everything is already attached. So now we move up to the top part. First, what we're going to do is the sternum sensor. There's in the t-shirt a little pouch over here where you can place the sensor and then it's tight again. And if you can turn around, Peter, we have the same thing for the shoulders, a left one and a right one in which we put on the sensors. This is, this is basically the only sensor that will be displayed and not covered by a strap or anything. Then we go to the arms. We have the upper arm on the left side. Same thing as with the upper legs, biceps, triceps, we put it in between and just wrap it around. A nice indication is the side of the t-shirt. We do the same thing for this side. Put it on the right side in between the biceps and the triceps again at the edge of the t-shirt. And then it's attached. For the forearm, we have these smaller straps. As you can see, they're a little bit smaller. This one is the left side. What we always do, we put it on the forearm. We ask if the person can extend his wrist, which is perfectly capable, and then attach it to, oh, to the wrist. Wrap it around like that. And same for the right side. So again, we put the sensor at the edge, ask him to extend his wrist, which is fine. And then we wrap it around. So we have only the hands left. In, with the system, we have two sizes of gloves. This is size L, but we also have a size M. Basically, it's really easy. There are little small pouches in there, which you can tuck the sensor in. So this is the left hand, put it in there and put it on top. And same for the right hand. We slide it in there and then it's attached. Only one last sensor left, the head sensor. This comes with a nice headband. Basically, we pull the fabric back a little bit. There's a nice Velcro patch, put the sensor on top, slide it over and we give it to Peter. And it basically doesn't matter how you put the sensor on there. Now it's on the side, but it can also be on the back of the head or on top of the head, whatever you would prefer. So basically, this is from top to bottom, a complete full body setup. Okay, welcome everybody to the next part. What we're going to do is we're going to calibrate the system. So what we're going to do, we will talk it through the steps and then you will see uh, how it works so that you have an idea uh, on how you have to calibrate the system. I brought my measurement tape so we can measure the body dimensions. First, when you fire up the system or start up the system, you will go, go into your motion capture configuration window. Then you will see all the green dots, which means that all the sensors are connected. And the next step is to measure the body height. So first I will go stand behind Peter, put the measuring tape against his heel, and I will measure him, which is one meter 90. So, Nine zero. Then we measure the inside of his shoe. So from heel to toe, his shoe is 32 centimeters. So we put that into the system as well. So now all the other parameters get scaled accordingly, which means that we can uh, start with our calibration. So if we press OK, 
then you will see the system live in our um, in the window however what you see is that the system is still upside down this is a little bit on purpose so that you never forget to actually calibrate the next step is the most important part of setting up our system the neutral pose we have to do to do the calibration so peter if you can stand a little bit to the side yes i'll stand behind you and please put your feet against mine so now we know the feet are uh, feet width apart then it's very important that the feet are not to the side or to the inside so can you please align your feet a little bit more inside yes perfectly so now if we look from the front you can see everything is nice and straight if we look from the side it's very important that when he is standing like this he faces the horizon that he's standing up straight with his shoulders relaxed so can you please pull them up and let them fall yes exactly and then it's important to put the hand against the side of the leg make sure his arms are very straight so in this way you have the perfect end pose and if you can stand in this way peter we will start the calibration process so if we go to calibrate you'll see a nice uh, settings window and you we have already chosen the end pose which is recommended and then i help peter to calibrate however it's also possible to calibrate myself which gives you a little bit of a delay if we click on next we will see the process so we start at a fixed position then we hold the end pose for a few seconds four seconds in this place then we move around which is just a gradually normal walk don't do strange rapid movements just walk slowly and then we wait for the calibration to finish and then the last step is just standing still so this is the process we're going to follow we click on next then again the end pose is uh, displayed so what we have to do but i just told you guys already what to do so now we're going to start the calibration peter is in the end pose can you please look up to the front perfect and we start the calibration hold end pose so we hold the end pose for four seconds move Perfect. around now you can move around peter as you can see he gradually walks around doesn't make any rapid movements and this is basically what he needs to do so peter can you please Processing. stand still with standing still we can just relax and we wait for the calibration process to finish now it will say stand, stand still, please. still and we see we have a good calibration in order to finish the calibration we always advise for the first 10 seconds to just move around so we can warm up of our filters and as you can see on the display it's very nice that um, yeah, peter is moving and everything looks okay it's always good to check a little bit if there's no strange movements that sometimes maybe um, by some reason you mixed up left and right but then you will see it immediately in your calibration so this was the final part and now we can start our recording if we want to by pressing the red button and then you can start making your recordings and this is the finish of the calibration procedure so thank you everybody for watching so far um, now we finished the calibration and you can see basically peter is calibrated and we can see him uh, moving in the screen however we also want to introduce you to our avatar mo and you can see basically peter is uh, perfectly aligned with mo all the movements are synchronized and uh, yeah from here we can start with doing the recordings which can be for example in ergonomics for industrial analysis we can do sports science we can go into the health sector and measure in a hospital so all different applications which is very what is very important to remember is you can do this anywhere you want in any environment and this is basically how it works so thank you peter and uh, yeah that's it okay thank you everybody for watching so far in the next part we're going to show you a few application areas in ergonomics so what we're going to do we're going to pop up the screen and we'll show you an example of somebody working in a production factory what you can see he's picking the box he's putting it down he's afterwards he's uh, lifting it up again and everything is very um, nicely synchronized you can see the avatar is working perfectly fine 
Um, but all of this happens in a very challenging environment. You can see the metal racks, there's a lot of interference of the machines, but still this works perfectly well. This is what you can expect from us when you're measuring for ergonomics, but not only for ergonomics in any environment. That the data is very reliable, very stable, and you can do this yeah, for the length of the battery, which is basically six and a half hours. So you can measure the complete day. After this, we also have another example, which you can see in the next video, which comes now. Also heavy um, interference environment, a lot of metal, big machines, same thing. We can use our system and it works perfectly fine. So of course we have made the recording. We uh, recorded a lot of data, but then we go into the next step. How can you use that data? What we have developed with Xsense uh, and Movella is uh, MVN reports. Specifically with MVN reports, we have three different reports in ergonomics available, which is the Reba report, the Rula report, and an adjustable ergonomics report. Uh, many people might know the Rula and the Reba, which is Rula is rapid upper limb assessment. And we have Reba, which is rapid entire body assessment. Both are basically quick scans. But what we can do now is instead of making a video and analyze it frame by frame with pen and paper, we create a recording. We can add a video stream if you want to. And basically with the push of the button, everything is calculated and you have everything in one nice overview. And the other very nice thing is it's objective data because it is created by the computer and our system, which is very reliable data and validated data. So you have a quick and validated tool, but you can do a lot more assessments in the same time. Another thing with adjustable ergonomics report, it's a more in-depth report. So if you want to do an in-depth analysis, um, we provide you with these options. As you can see on the screen, with the, the adjustable ergonomics uh, report, you can deep dive into what's actually happening during all these movements. You can see on the bottom part in the middle, we can put in all different ergonomics thresholds and range of motion thresholds. And on the left bottom part, you can see the basically the green line, which is the recording. But then you see also the green horizontal bars, which are the range of motion cutoff points. And if you can look closely, you also see some uh, black horizontal lines which are the range of motion cutoff points. In the table, you can see, for example, where we put our thresholds for range of motion and the ergonomics threshold. But you can also see the angular velocity, the angular acceleration. But what is also very important, the percentage of time that somebody is outside of the limits, the accumulated static time, so how long was he in that position, and the frequency of that movement, all of which is very important data and which you can see on the right bottom part, we make a score for each individual joint, which doesn't mean you have to analyze every joint. You can also select or deselect, but this gives you a very nice immediate overview on where are the problems and where are the focus points. Another nice thing is we can put in different tasks. So for example, if you have a lifting task and a um, other task, for example, stepping up something, you can put these specific tasks into the range of mode into the, the adjustable ergonomics report. And then on the right top part, you can see a spaghetti diagram. So you can see how many time of, and which displacement did somebody have at a specific task or specific workstation, for example. So all in all, you can do a quick scan with, for example, a ruler or a Reba, identify some focus areas, and then do your in-depth analysis with adjustable ergonomics providing you with a lot more options and a lot more interest. So all in all, this is what we can do from collecting the data with our system, converting it to a report and providing you with the meaningful data you would need. All is very quick, reliable, but also objective, saving you a lot of time. This is what we wanted to show you guys today. Thank you for watching and hopefully uh, you'll be with us next time when we explain a different topic. My name is Jordi Kocho, and I want to thank you very much for your attention. Have a good day. Hello, everybody. Um, here I am again. I hope you all enjoyed uh, this webinar.
Uh, I see there were a few people who asked some questions, so that's why I have the tablet here in my hand, so I can check the, the, the questions and hopefully provide you with some answers. The first question was from Alexis Knapper. Uh, the question was, are the sensors from MVN or Winda subjected to any vibration? I'm wondering if they could be largely affected by the workplace vibrations, both whole body and hand arm. So this is actually a really good question. Um, our system will detect any movement made by the person. And of course, if you stand very still and uh, there's a lot of vibrations, yeah, these vibrations will be measured by the system. System is that accurate that, for example, it's also being used in other use cases as a light detector. So this gives you an insight on how accurate the data is from the system. If you have more um, questions about how accurate or the validity of the system or how it works, on our webpage, movella.com, you can find a lot of validation papers, comparisons to other uh, systems like optical electronic systems. So feel free to check them out or reach out to us at sales at movella.com or info at movella.com. I hope that answers your question. Otherwise, please let me know. There was one other question from Matthias Paulsen. He said, is there any way of calibrating the system if you have a neuromuscular patient incapable of doing calibration stands or standing still? So that's actually a very good question, which we get more often. Um, in these type of patients, it's very difficult sometimes to stand in the engross, the neutral pose. Um, what we see in some use cases, for example, if you go on our website, there is a um, a dedicated area for customer cases, as we call them. There you will find some customer cases on cerebral palsy, for example. Uh, in these specific neuro, um, neurological patients, what they did is they assisted them to stay in the end post because you can easily help people standing against a wall, keep their arms straight, keep their legs straight. If this is also not a possibility for these type of patients, um, there are some specific um, other ways to do it, however, these are not publicly available. So if you have any other questions, feel free to just reach out to us. We will discuss the use case and maybe we can see if we can help uh, or assist in that case. So I hope that answers the question as well. There's one case from Alina Almeida, if we can share these slides after the presentation. Um, I will look at my team, but um, if I'm not, um, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, we will uh, present a recording of this webinar on our webpage. So um, if you cannot find it, also feel free to reach out to us and we will help you find a way on the website. Yeah, um, and I also hear uh, that it will be received by, uh, by email. Okay, there's one from Nicola Berti. It says, how ergonomic thresholds were defined? Which standard or index was adopted to determine them? Also good question. If you go to our knowledge base, which is base.xsense.com, you will find a more elaborated articles on how our reports are being uh, built. So we have a RULA report, a RIBA report, and an adjustable ergonomics. So for RULA and RIBA, basically the RULA and RIBA terms uh, and determinations and validations were applied. So these are the, yeah, the standard scientific papers. And for the adjustable ergonomics, there's a specific one. It's an ISO EN. Uh, and yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know the exact identification anymore. It's something like around one, 1,005 that is uh, based uh, on this um, specific report. But like I said, all information can be found on the web page or on our knowledge base page. So please take a look at it over there or again, contact us. There's one from Roland Motmans. Um, which biomechanical model do you use for the interpretation? So the biomechanical model of XSENS is built based on the ISB configurations, so the International Standards of Biomechanics. Um, if you want to have more in-depth knowledge on our biomechanical model, we again have our base.xsense.com. If you just type in MVN biomechanical model, a lot of details will be presented over there. Another um, nice resource you can go to is on the webpage, we have white papers and the manual of our system which also gives you information on the biomechanical model. If that's not sufficient, feel free to reach out to our support team that have dedicated product specialists that are in-depth uh, trained and have 
a lot of knowledge on our biomechanical model and we will help you over there. So support at movella.com. You can always reach out to them. There's one last question. Um, if you can use the system everywhere. So that's actually a nice question. Um, our system can be used everywhere because the XN system is the only system available at the moment that is magnetically immune. That means it doesn't matter if you use it near a machine, in a workplace environment, any disturbed sourcing of data, it's not a problem with our uh, Xsense MVN engine, as we call it. We solve all the distortions, so this makes our system magnetically immune. So if you want the system to use it inside of the plant, outside, in a lab, or anywhere you want to, the data will always be valid. So that's a big, uh, a big plus of our system. Good question. I see there's another question from Nicola Berti. How are the target of the reports generated by your software? I'm not sure I really understand the question with what do you mean by target of the report? Um, that if you have, if you mean like, how do we calculate the specific cutoff points? That's all based on the literature of these specific uh, reports. So, for a ruler, for example, they determine specific angles for the neck and for the shoulder and for the elbow and score accordingly. And basically, that's how we build up the report as well. Only now it's not done by an observation of a person, but the system will do it for you, which makes it reliable, also repeatable, but also interchangeable between persons because it's not um, a matter of subjectivity anymore that you see it 10 degrees or 15 degrees, but it's the system detecting it, making it a very yeah, reliable report now. Here's a question of Omar Rocha, if I say it right, sorry. Um, are you planning to have a local office inside Mexico sometime soon? So for Mexico, uh, I think it would be good to reach out to either our US team, but we also have a um, dedicated person, Andres Kuti, and he's located in, the, uh, in Sao Paulo, in the in the Latin American region. So either our US office or the um, uh, Andres Kuti can yeah, assist you in this question. Just feel free to reach out to us and we can check what's possible. I see another question from Elina Almeida. Is it possible to also have access to sensor raw data individually? That's actually possible in two ways. With our MVN Analyze software, you can easily export data into, for example, an Excel file. In the Excel file, you have access to uh, all the joint angles of all the different regions, but also for each segment that holds a sensor, so the hand, the arm, upper arm, legs, etc. We also define accelerations, orientations, positional data, angular velocities, velocities. So all the data is also individually for each segment available. And also the, the raw sensor data, as we call it, it's not raw, raw because of course it is processed through our MVN engine, but you have access to the free acceleration as we call it, the magnetometer data and the uh, orientational data. Okay, good question from Nicola. I now understand it. Who are the target, final targets of the reports? Workers, managers, ergonomists? Um, we see it as we want to make it um, accessible for everybody. So it doesn't matter if you are a worker who wants to assess their own workplace. I don't see that happening very soon. But let's say you are a one-man ergonomist in a company of a thousand workers, and you have to now, now assess three or four product lines by yourself. It takes you a lot of time because you have different employers. You have to do everything by hand or by a camera. And yeah, maybe for one uh, analysis, it might take you a day or two days. And then it's still subjective. So what we want to do is within the 15 to 10 minute setup time, you make your recording, upload it to the cloud, and then you immediately have your reporting available to report back to your manager. But also managers can use it to the higher level to say, okay, maybe we need to um, innovate in this workstation because there's a lot of injury. We can make it more efficient and less prone to injury. So we cut on the costs on both sides by doing an innovation. So I think it's multiple users. Um, but I'd love to get in touch with you and talk about this a little bit more on yeah, what you would see and what might be easy for your uh, application area.
I have another question from Stephen, Stephen Simon. Um, I would like to export collected data via Accents to Excel. Loading every individual measurement costs time. Do you have recommendations for fast export of data for statistical analysis? Very good question. Um, within MVN Analyze, we have the option to do a batch export. Basically, what you do in the software, you set it up, you select all the files you have, you select if you want to have them reprocessed or not, and then you set the specific exporter type you want. So FBX, BVH, and in this case, also Excel. So then overnight, it will get all reprocessed and exported. So in that case, you can do a lot of files at once. So then next day, you can start your statistical analysis in either MATLAB or uh, SPSS or any other uh, yeah, software program that you want to use the, the Excel file. I see there are no other questions anymore in my tablet, at least. So I want to give you one final minute to post last questions you might have. Otherwise, I'll take now the chance to uh, thank you all for listening in. And like we said, you will receive a link afterwards to rewatch this, this webinar. Uh, if you have any additional questions in a later stage, feel free to reach out to us. And yeah. We, we hope we were able to inform you today on something nice and give you some new insights. And uh, yeah, we would love to get in touch with you to see if we can do something together. Or if you're interested, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to help you. So thanks a lot for your time. Um, I'm going to close it off now. Um, hope you all have a very good day or evening, wherever you're from. And uh, we'd love to see you next time again when we host a new webinar. Take care and greetings from uh, Enschede in the Netherlands.